That's sort of how I approach a healthy eating plan. Number one, I try to focus on whole foods as much as possible. Number two, I try to avoid genetically modified ingredients as much as possible. And number three, I try to purchase organic ingredients whenever I can. Hey y'all, welcome back to Homemade Simple. If we've not met before, I'm Lori. I'm so glad that you're here today. Lane and I are here at Costco, and although I'm pretty new to the Costco membership game, I have learned quite a few things about being a member at Costco and some of the really good, healthy, nutritious options that we can find here. I wanted to share a couple of those with y'all as well as talk a little bit more in depth about why healthy food is important and some of the things that I try to make priorities when I'm at the grocery store, reading labels and considering all of the options available for my family. I think there's just a couple of things that if we keep in mind, we can really eliminate a lot of unhealthy food options for our family and in our family's diet. And in particular, GMOs, what they are, why I try to avoid them, and what I try to migrate toward instead of those bioengineered ingredients. So let's go into Costco real quick. Hopefully I can share a couple of things that you find helpful and useful. I know that a lot of y'all have been members at Costco for a really long time and have a lot of good favorites that you buy here on a regular basis. Please be sure to share those in the comments because I need all of the help that I can get to find all of the great things that are hidden inside this huge warehouse store. So let's go in and see some of my family's favorite finds at Costco and also talk a little bit more about the health benefits of some of those foods. food items and some of the things that I wanted to talk to y'all about today. I want to tell you a little bit about how I feel about Costco membership in general and if I like it or not. Um, overall, I really like having a Costco membership and I've been able to make my money back on the membership that I purchased back in December. I'll check and see if that special is still going on. I got a really great deal on our membership. It ended up being like $20, I think, for our membership. If you have a Costco in your area, it's definitely worth it if you can find that deal. If it is not available anymore and it's the regular $60, I still feel like there's a lot of good benefits to having a Costco membership and you're going to make your $60 back. I really do recommend everybody that has a Costco in their neighborhood purchasing a Costco membership. That being said, if you have a Sam's Club membership, there's a big difference I have noticed in Costco versus Sam's Club. Every store is going to have its own personality and I feel like the personality at Costco is sort of a little more upscale and a little less friendly and engaging than Sam's Club is. So I've never had like a negative feeling when I was in Sam's Club, like um, people were sort of looking at me funny or I was in people's way. Uh, every now and again, well, actually every time I've been here at Costco, I have sort of had a feeling of um, I didn't belong. And I know this sounds really odd, but I've talked to my friends and they have that feeling too. So this is something that you just have to push through. The feeling at Costco is a little more busy, business-like. I don't like that part. Lane Bobby, is. Mommy, why she sh that? <laughs> Um, I, I don't like that part about the Costco membership. So I don't really like feeling judged. I've said that before. I have a tendency to feel like people are judging me and I, I feel that very strongly here sometimes, which Chris says that's ridiculous and I shouldn't even think about that or worry about that. But if you are 
a person that sort of has my personality, just be aware that that's something that you're gonna have to overcome. So Sam's Club is a lot more laid back, a lot more friendly and inviting. Costco is a lot more business. If that will bother you, Costco might not be for you, but if you can push through and avoid feeling um, overwhelmed by that, then I think you can really benefit from shopping here at Costco. So with all of that out of the way, I will talk a little bit about why I like Costco. And although I did go and renew my membership at Sam's, so I have a, a membership there and at Costco, I do still want to shop at Costco, even though I feel a little bit uncomfortable here because of all of the really good nutritious food options available there are a lot of good nutritious food options here at costco that you really are not going to be able to find at such a low price anywhere else so i feel like costco has a, a major focus on um, higher quality and more nutritious food choices as opposed to sam's being more focused on economical food choices they do still have a lot of processed foods here they do still have a lot of gmo products here so i'm not saying everything here is perfect but there is more of a tendency here at costco to have some good options that might not be available other places for as great of a deal as they are available here. I'm gonna go in to some of the food sections and talk to you about some of those things that are available and some of the things that I try to focus on. But before we go into any specifics, I do wanna talk a little bit about what is a GMO and why do I even care about GMOs? The reason that I try to avoid GMOs for my family is very simple. My philosophy about food products is the way God created them is the best way for us to consume them. So as minimally processed as possible, that's the way I want to prioritize my food choices for my family. I have sort of a hierarchy of things that I try to focus on whenever I am shopping and choosing food for our meal plans. So number one, it would be I want to try to choose whole foods when at all possible. That means in the, for the most part, it's gonna be a one ingredient item. So oats would be a whole food, beef would be a whole food, but then you could go and get like a packet of oatmeal, that would not be a whole food. Those kinds of things I try to avoid as much as I can. The second thing that I try to prioritize is to avoid genetically modified food ingredients and to go for non-GMO food items as much as I possibly can. So what is a GMO? A GMO is a food ingredient that has been genetically, scientifically, molecularly changed by a scientist in a laboratory. They have taken something that is not a naturally occurring part of that food item and then inserted it into the food item to create a different genetic makeup. So for example, whenever Monsanto created Roundup Ready corn, they did that by molecularly changing the genetics of the corn seed so that whenever the corn as it was growing was sprayed with glyphosate or Roundup, it would not be killed. All the weeds would be killed, but the corn itself would be allowed to grow, which may sound like a really good thing until you think about how a scientist is changing the very makeup of the ingredient itself or the seed itself. So you have now taken a natural product created by God, a corn seed, and you have changed it to its very genetics and inserted something that is not natural into that food item. So that is not a good idea in my mind. I know a lot of farmers are all about GMOs and it really helps them create a lot of crops that are accessible for a lot of people. But in my mind, whenever we go and alter the genetics 
and the molecular level of a food ingredient, that's just really not somewhere I wanna go. You don't know the long-term ramifications of that because this has not been going on very long. So what are the cancer-causing ramifications of eating genetically modified foods? Well, we don't know because they've not been around long enough to have long-term studies. What about an allergy that someone might have to a particular food ingredient and because this other food ingredient has been genetically modified with an ingredient that I may be allergic to, how am I gonna know if this is a genetically modified food ingredient, how am I gonna know that it contains this secondary ingredient that I'm allergic to when all of this information is not available? So there's a lot of ramifications that we really haven't thought through, I think, as a society and the food and drug administration has just allowed this to happen thinking well there's no ramifications to allowing this and we really just do not know that is the number two thing that i tried to prioritize finding as many non-gmo ingredients as i possibly can and then number three it would be as much as i am able to purchase organic ingredients. And the benefit there is all of the thinking is really done for me in a lot of the scenarios that I just mentioned. So in an organic ingredient, you're not gonna have any GMOs allowed in that ingredient itself. So anything that is on the ingredients list, anything that is included in that organic food item none of it is going to be allowed to be genetically modified so all of that stuff that i just said in point number two we didn't we don't even have to think about it's already thought out for us so are there pesticides still used on organic items well yes there are and there are still some concerns about that however the amount of concerns really goes down to a very small percentage of what it is with the conventionally grown and especially the genetically modified food ingredients that we find in a ton of food available in our food system. So that's sort of how I approach a healthy eating plan. Number one, I try to focus on whole foods as much as possible. Number two, I try to avoid genetically modified or also known as bioengineered ingredients as much as possible. And number three, I try to purchase organic ingredients whenever I can. Okay, so now that I've said all of that, we're gonna talk a little more about genetically modified foods and uh, organic foods whenever we do our gardening video that's coming up in April Lord willing so make sure that you are subscribed and you turn on the bell icon so that you'll be notified when all the new videos are added that way you won't miss that gardening video several of you have said you're excited about that and I'm really excited about it too although I sort of am not the best gardener so you may want to also go and find some good gardening channels to watch so that I don't mess you up but we will get through the growing season together and I'm excited to share that video with y'all now that we have gone over sort of our priorities list and how we choose things, let's go and talk about some of the things that I have found in my first three months of Costco membership that I really have enjoyed having. And so I've gathered some things in my bucket I wanna to talk to you about. And I wanna start with two of the items that I think it's important for you to focus on, either getting organic or non-GMO ingredients. I'm gonna start with corn. 95% of the corn that is grown in America is a genetically modified version of the vegetable. So I try to just avoid all conventionally grown corn whenever it is at all possible. I just don't buy corn unless it is organic because this is one ingredient that has just permeated the market and the food supply with genetically modified ingredients and so whenever it's possible I just try to avoid buying corn unless I can buy an organic version of it. Uh, I love corn and I have not been able to successfully grow corn yet so this sort of hurts my heart 
You can find frozen organic corn readily available in pretty much any major grocery store. That is where I lean most of the time. It's just frozen corn and we just have to miss out on the whole ears of corn until summer gets here and somebody that knows what they're doing is able to grow some non-GMO versions. The next ingredient that you may find as a genetically modified whole food ingredient is squash. For some reason, they have chosen squash and papaya, of all things, to start genetically modifying. So if I'm gonna buy squash at the store, whole squash, I'm gonna try to make sure that it's non-GMO. Costco has an organic bag and it's at a, a really good price. So this is a good option for dinner, especially while we wait for our garden to start producing the squash that we like to eat, homegrown. But this is a really good choice. Whenever you're buying squash, just try to find some that's non-GMO or organic is even better. Apples are another thing that if I had a choice, I would prefer to choose organic. Apples are highly sprayed with pesticides and herbicides. So if we can get an organic version of this at a reasonable price, I think that's a really good option. Also, someone mentioned last week about organic apple juice being a really smart choice because you don't know how the apples are cleansed and washed before processing. So if you can get apple products that are organic at a reasonable price, I think that's a really good use of your food budget. If you can't, just wash off the apples as well as you can and they should be absolutely fine. There's not any genetically modified concerns about apples. They've not gotten there yet. I'm sure they will eventually, but right now this is not a must have organic option, just a rather if you can afford it. I have really enjoyed buying these really large containers of organic spinach. I have it almost every morning for breakfast. I saute it in a skillet with a little bit of butter. After it's wilted, I pour my scrambled egg into it, scramble it all together. If I'm feeling a little extra, I will add some cheese. This is a really affordable way to get some really good nutrients and vitamins and minerals into your body. If you can convince your kids to eat this, this is a perfect breakfast. It keeps me full for a really long time and it gives me all of the nourishment that I need for the morning to help me get on with my day without feeling sluggish and tired and sick to my stomach. I really enjoy having this spinach. Another item I have started buying every time I come to Costco is this really huge container of lettuce. They sell this also at Sam's. This is not organic. I do just try to clean it really well and get as much of the pesticide off as I possibly can. And it's not going to be a concern about genetically modified ingredients. So. I just really enjoy having this huge container of lettuce that will last us the entire week and I have really enjoyed using this and having it on hand. I think it has really just helped up the likelihood that we're going to have some salad and vegetables available to us without a lot of extra trouble. I bought a huge bag of these broccoli for it. A cup, I mean it was maybe almost a month ago. They're still fresh in the bag. They last for a really long time. Now they do have an organic option, but the organic option is a whole dollar more expensive per pound. I wasn't able to afford that, so we just got this. I wash it before we eat it. It is such a versatile ingredient and such a really healthy and nourishing option. I absolutely love the organic beef here at Costco. I make a hamburger with it for lunch almost every day. I love just having that hamburger with a couple of chips we'll talk about in a minute. The ground turkey here is also a good option. Very affordable and very nutritious and healthy. The chicken, I would not buy the chicken here. There's much better options at Sam's. They do have organic chicken, but it's $6 a pound, which is really out of my budget range. So I think Sam's beats Costco when it comes to the chicken. This turkey is something that I love to have on hand. We have learned how just to chop it up and use it in salads for a real quick, healthy, protein-packed 
chef salad. Also, I like to slice it up and put it on sandwiches. So it's a really nice affordable option for lunches as well as dinners. These chicken breakfast links are really a good option also. It seems like a lot until you pick up the package. It is a heavy package. There's a lot of meat and protein packed in this package and it's lasted us for over a month having several each morning, at least every morning that I think about it to add to my eggs and spinach. I would highly recommend those as well. This is those one of those instances where I'm probably being judged, but maybe people will understand it's for the greater good. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta let them watch a little bit of monster trucks. I'm just seeing this gym right here, six kombuchas for $10.50. That is a really good deal. I'm gonna give these a try. I bought one for my trip recently with the girls to the beach and it was almost three dollars for a single jar of kombucha. This is a really good deal. I'm also going to pick up some of these wild blueberries. I have learned that wild blueberries have a larger concentration of beneficial vitamins and minerals than even organically grown. So I'm going to put these in my brand new freezer and put them in all kinds of smoothies and desserts. Rice cauliflower is a new ingredient to my household. Kendall has just tried it for the first time and absolutely loved it. Said she actually loved it more than regular rice and with the vitamins and minerals that you get from eating rice cauliflower instead of regular white rice, is incredible we're going to give this a try i'll let you know what we think but for two dollars a pound this is a really great option so far believe it or not i've gotten through half of the store and only had pretty much whole food ingredients so we haven't really had to talk about particular food ingredients until now so this is really where a lot of the gmo talk is going to be focused and concentrated we're going to have to talk about particular ingredients that are always or almost always going to be a gmo ingredient if it does not say otherwise things like sugar and corn starch corn syrup things like that are always going to be GMO unless you see the non-GMO food label or unless it says it somewhere else on the package. 99.9% .9 of the sugar beets that are grown in America are GMO ingredients. That means every single processed food item that you buy that has sugar in it, if it is not either organic or non-GMO labeled, it's going to have a GMO ingredient and it's probably going to be really high on the list. All of these cookies, cakes, snacks that are processed and available for easy consumption are almost always going to include that GMO high fructose corn syrup or sugar that is from GMO beets. So this is where we have to be really particularly careful about the choices that we make. The items over here are going to have to be items that we look through and check the ingredients list on a regular basis because what an ingredient list said last month may not be the same as this month. So always giving it a once over, giving it a good check and making sure that you're feeling comfortable about the ingredients list is really an important way to have major control over your food in your home and therefore having a lot more control over the health of your family in general. So let's talk about a couple of things that I have found here that I really like that do not contain those GMO ingredients. A couple of mistakes that I have made recently in the past I need to correct and also a couple of things that I would definitely try to avoid. Full disclosure, I've never had these before, but these really caught my eye because they're organic oatmeal, which is a really healthy whole grain, and they're also on sale for really a third of the normal cost. I'm gonna give these a try. I'll let y'all know what I think about them, but this looks like it could be a really good choice for a quick breakfast or snack. And just right next door, we have these very popular Little Bites muffins. I 
my daughter works at a preschool she says that a ton of the kids bring these on a very regular basis so I know that these are a really popular choice for a quick easy snack for our kids let's see why this is not going to be the best option so we have first of all sugar which again is going to be a GMO ingredient. We also have soybean oil, which soybean is one of the top GMO ingredients as well. We have more sugar, we have more sugar, we have hydrogenated palm oil, which again hydrogenated is not good for our heart health. It's taking a liquid and forcing it to be a solid, not healthy at all. We have corn syrup, which is a GMO ingredient. We have cornstarch, which is a GMO ingredient. Soy lecithin is a GMO ingredient. Artificial colors, red 40, very not good for our families bodies especially our little kids growing bodies these artificial colors are really not something that we want to have on a regular basis we have modified cornstarch gmo not good anytime we see modified that is a red flag word on one of these ingredients lists fructose another sugar ingredient all of this is going to be gmo natural and artificial flavors which you really can't believe the natural all the time you have to really consider the source preservatives we don't want to have a lot of preservatives in our diets natural food is made to go bad in a certain amount of time we don't need to preserve it so that it lasts forever a lot of GMO unhealthy not good ingredients for our little ones especially so let's find out a way that we can replace this with either a homemade option that might have four or five ingredients or another packaged option that's just as easy but much better for their health here is an organic pretzel option let's look at the ingredients on this package compared to some of the others that we might find so first of all you can see the benefit of an organic processed food might very well be the limited number of ingredients we have wheat flour very good organic cane sugar which is not going to be a gmo just as an aside, they cannot put GMO ingredients in organic food, so you don't ever have to worry about that. Organic tapioca syrup, which is going to be a sweetener, and then malt extract as well is going to be organic, and then baking soda. Just a very few ingredients to make these yummy pretzels. Putting them with some hummus might be just the perfect option for your family's munchies that are going to keep them nice and satisfied but also give them a healthy option. Okay, let's talk about potato chips because I'm just going to be very frank with y'all. Potato chips is one of my very favorite foods. We have two options here that are pretty similar in price. The Kirkland is going to be about 19 cents an ounce and then the Cape Cod is going to be a little less than 25 cents an ounce not a huge difference a little difference but if you're buying potato chips it's probably not going to make a big dent in your budget so let's talk about why i would pick this cape cod option instead of the kettle brand first of all we're starting off with two really good options because of the flavor we're just having a salt flavor on the potato chips so that's going to eliminate a lot of extra ingredients so you'll see there's a very few ingredients on both of these items, but here we have potatoes, vegetable oil, and salt. Our oils are canola, sunflower, and or safflower oil on this, but what I saw on the front made that a very important distinction. This non-GMO verified food label means that the canola oil that is used in this product is not going to be a genetically modified canola oil. But when we look here, we see the same ingredients, but there's no non-GMO food label on this particular product. So we know that the canola oil included in this product is going to be a GMO canola oil. That, that makes this Cape Cod option much better of a choice than these 
kettle brand chips even though the kettle brand chips are a little cheaper overall this is not going to add a lot to our overall food budget and the value that we're getting in the food quality is much better we found a lot of good items here at costco today before i check out i do need to redeem myself about something that i talked to y'all about a couple months ago i think it was I told y'all about these Dots pretzels and how absolutely delicious they are and I'm not going to go back on that. They do taste really good. But I owe you an apology because I encouraged you to buy something that I later realized was a no-go for what I want to encourage y'all to focus on, which is non-GMO if at all possible. I know sometimes they're going to get through. But when I was eating these pretzels the other day, I looked at the label and I was so upset because in these gigantic, huge black letters, it says derived from bioengineered source. So that means it is a genetically modified food. You have the canola oil, the soybean oil, artificial butter flavor. I'm so sorry I encouraged y'all to buy that corn syrup, GMO, MSG, something I tried to avoid, artificial flavors. I don't even know what that says. It's got like 8,000 letters in it for one word. That seems unnatural. So again, nobody is going to be able to eat perfectly all the time. And I think if we just try to use that 80-20 rule that I've talked about before, focus on as good of options as we can afford and can purchase for our families 80% of the time, that other 20% where we let Dots pretzels and other things creep into our diet, it's going to be fine and it's not going to have a major long-term effect. If we can just be mindful and make a little bit better decision every single time that we go to the store, it's really going to make a big difference over the long haul. Yeah. I am dedicated to helping all of us make wise and good, but also budget-friendly choices whenever we come to the grocery store. I want to also help you when you're at home by giving you some really good, healthy, nutritious recipe options to help you make good food for your family and still keep the budget at as minimal a level as possible so I hope that you're enjoying this series we have one more to go that is at Sam's Club I haven't decided yet and I would love to hear your ideas about this this is the last week in March so it's time for me to do my grocery budget video for March I don't know if I should finish up this series next week or if I should give you my budget for March and then finish up this series later in April. Let me know in the comments what you think might be the best way to do that and I would be really grateful for that input. Well I hope that you have learned a little bit of something that's useful in today's video. I know that it was really loud and I know that me carrying this camera around with a toddler in Costco was a little bit distracting. I'm sorry about that. I hope that you did benefit a little bit from some of the things that we talked about today. Also, if you have any specific questions about GMOs or organic ingredients, please be sure to leave those down below as well. I do plan on having a gardening video really soon in April and those kinds of questions will be helpful to me to know about the things that you would like for me to talk about. So be sure and leave those down below as well. Well, I'm sorry again, this is the third video in a row. I have absolutely talked your ear off. I hope that something I've said has been helpful. I really appreciate you watching today. I hope that you have a wonderful week. I love you and I will see you again next time. Everybody needs a little bit of ice cream in their life, even if it might not be the very healthiest of choice every time. But I choose the fruit smoothie that's no sugar added. It's got even superfoods in it. Oh no! And it's really, really good.